92.1 WROI, WROIFM.com, and streaming audio live on RTC Channel 5. And we're pleased to welcome to the studio this morning Barry Hazel, who is the vice president of the Fulton County Council and also council spokesperson. Hey, Barry, how you doing? Good. Welcome back. Nice to have you with us. Yeah, well, glad to be here. All right. Let's talk about the council meeting last night, if we could, please. Okay. Uh, a couple things happened. Um, the uh, We didn't do our our uh, budget reconciliation because we have to have an announced meeting for that. And it uh, looks like we're going to have to figure out how to cut about 800, 800 to 900000 from the existing budget. Is that from the state now? This is directive from, uh, yes, DOGF. Okay. Yeah. And uh, one of the things that, uh, another thing that we did is we uh, amended the treasurer's fees, which uh, that's to get the, uh, the fees in line with what our actual costs are. Okay. Uh, one example was we're only charging $20 for an NSF check. And the bank was charging us 37, so we made it 37. <laughs> all right. So now we should be all even on that part. Um, we had a report from the sheriff that uh, this, uh, I guess, this weekend they had 90 plus prisoners in the in the jail, and 27 of them were female, and that caused some issues with how to get them all in there. So he ended up sending 10 of them to uh, Pulaski. And, uh, and so they're going to be over there for a while till we get the population back down. Okay. Um, I think that what they charge us compared to what it costs us to house a prisoner, it's like $10 a day per person. Okay. So it's not too much damage, but it's not in our favor. Um, being that there's, we seem to be having issues with the age of the jail and that sort of thing. Um, we saw, we, uh, authorized a contract the commissioners actually authorized are actually authorizing it but we consented to a, uh, a study contract with DLGF I'm sorry DLZ which is an engineering firm okay and they're going to do a four-month study of the jail the condition of it and the uh, has to do with the population and the, and the population mix that we have and come up with some recommendations for uh, what we might need to do to to help things out okay there. and uh, another thing that's going on is we're uh, looks like we're going to upgrade our CAD system which is computer aided dispatch which ties in with the sheriff department um, uh, we're waiting a quote from from the chosen vendor and then we're going to have a joint city county and and uh, both council and commissioners and the city council and the mayor so we get the uh, the information on the quote all at one time. That way, everybody knows what's going on. Uh, I'm not sure exactly when that's going to happen. Probably in the next couple of weeks. Okay, that's important for everybody. Well, yeah, it's so an the, important system, no the, doubt about it. The CAD it. system is going to help with a lot of things because right. it'll make it easier to find information, and uh, it'll cut. It'll allow the the deputies and the police to do to do their reports quicker. And so they can spend more time uh, patrolling. Okay. Uh, let's see what else. There's a uh, we're looking at doing a time card system, which will simplify the the payroll since they have so many different schedules, and uh, that'll that'll eliminate the hand the hand time card version. Uh, we're Probably not give sure you exactly a little more that give you a little more accuracy too. Yes. Right. Yes. Yeah. And uh, they're also looking at an accounting system, which will handle the uh, the fees, the tax tax lien payments okay. from the uh, I think from the sheriff sales, and handle the commissary account and the uh, sheriff's cash book. Um, and the uh, the highway department, which had a pretty interesting uh, presentation. We're, um, they did an, what's called an LTAP study, which uh, maps the traffic accidents in the county okay. and shows where the hot spots are. And, and so we can try to, you know, change some signage or whatever to 
uh, to try and reduce that. Okay. And the uh, another thing that they did recently, since the weather's been nice and they haven't spent a lot of time on snow removal, they've been able to do a lot of other things. And John uh, John Greer was complimented on his ability to clear the roads. Excellent. So that's due to the weather, partially. But uh, one thing that they did is they cleared log jams from the bridges along the Tippecanoe River, which should help them uh, prevent the br- right. bridges from having trouble. In exactly. Future. Especially when high water comes, that'll be, right. that'll be a big help. Uh, we were doing an engineering study on the, uh, on the river road to uh, improve the uh, embankment. We're just going to do the study, which... Um, includes the engineering and uh, and permit filing and we're going to put it on the shelf so that we'll be ready when there's funding available to fix that road okay uh, that's a, I think that's uh, around fifty thousand dollars for that which is they think they can do it for you know between two and four hundred thousand which is a lot less than the Army Corps version yeah, they came they came in with a pretty big uh, pretty one, big expenditure 1. 6 million right yeah and finally, uh, let's see, uh, the construction on uh, Bridge 503, which I think is on 200 North. Okay. That should be completed in May. And we're, uh, we're planning to buy a, uh, a new paver and rubber tire roller for the highway department. Um, I think we're going to do a lease, a lease purchase on that, which is uh, the rental on the tire roller. The payment for that will be about what we paid to rent one. Wow. Plus, we'll have it all the time. Right. And the uh, the paver, we need to have that in order to finish Olson Road and uh, and some other projects that are okay. going on. That's, that's pretty much it. Okay. Barry Hazel again. He's vice president of the Fulton County Council. Barry, you mentioned as we started this conversation about having to cut some money from the budget and that type of thing and i know that kind of goes around every year give us a perspective overall fulton county's financial picture we doing okay yes yes we're doing we're doing okay you know it's uh of course tax revenue is not not increasing as fast as the uh, expenses seem to so we we keep having to uh, do things to work so that we can do things with maybe fewer people right. or or more efficiently so we can save some money that way. And O2, there was some talk about the paver, maybe an insurance settlement on that? Uh, yes, that uh, we're going to use the uh, insurance settlement okay. on that as a down payment on the paver. Okay. Barry, kind of take a look to the next council meeting, which of course will be in the month of March. Uh, some of these agenda items I know continue on. Right. Um, the main thing I think is going to be uh, reconciling their our budget to get that approved and uh, and I think you know probably the, the CAD system will be coming around and uh, like I said we'll be having a having a meeting on that okay and I think we're gonna go forward with it because the current system is just not very good seems like it would benefit everybody it I mean will. you mentioned Fulton County but you also mentioned the city of Rochester and right and, and so uh, it's kind of a win-win type thing, right? And the other, uh, the other little ta- other towns, uh, Fulton and right. Kiwana, sure. I think they're going to tap into it also. Excellent, Barry Hazel. We appreciate your time. We appreciate the visit this afternoon or this morning, I should say. Thanks very much. Well, thanks for having me. You bet. All right.